Greetings. My name is Monica Weitzel, and we are here with the Jesuit Volunteer Corps Northwest. Happy to introduce you to Ian Rober, who's a recruiter. Yeah. Thanks, Ian, for being here. Right. And Liz Purdy, the Outreach and Events Coordinator at JVC Northwest. Yes. Liz and I met um, at a, an event. It was a nonprofit uh, kind Training. of networking thing mm -hmm. uh, about diversity. A little while ago, we started talking and, and realized that you know, this might be an interesting topic for Community Hotline, so I'm glad you came on here today and, yeah, and thank followed you so up. Much. So Jesuit Volunteer Corps, um, who, who wants to tell me a little bit of the history of it? Ian, do you want to start with that? Maybe can you give me a little history, maybe sure. what the mission is and, and, and how it all came about? Sure. It's an old program, so we started mm -hmm. around 1956, and it started with the Jesuits. Uh, actually, yeah, You weren't there then, were you? I was not there, no, just a few years. Yeah. Yeah, wait. <laughs> uh, the Jesuits started a few missions, actually in Alaska, mm -hmm. and they just kind of started recruiting a few students here and there to help them, number one, build the schools, and number two, be the educators at these schools. And the Jesuits were the priests. This correct, was the, yeah, correct, okay. kind of overseeing these missions. Uh, that was a big hot spot back then uh, for education. So that's kind of our, our roots. From there, it, there's a lot of developments that went mm -hmm. on uh, throughout mm -hmm. the 60s and 70s, ultimately moving us to Portland um, and calling us the Jesuit Volunteer Corps. So is uh, this the this is the main headquarters here in Portland? It is. So it started it started in, in that region and then has since expanded. So throughout the 70s and 80s, it expanded to the East Coast, the Midwest, even internationally. Uh, ultimately having different kind of regions, you'll call them, separate and become kind of their own offices. And that's kind of how we became Jesuit Volunteer Corps Northwest. And Northwest covers, Liz, what, what areas does that cover? We're in the five states of Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, and Alaska. Okay. Now, you both have actually were Jesuit volunteers before you were hired to work for the Correct. Jesuit Correct. Volunteer Corps. Um, Liz, what did you do? So I served in Sitka, Alaska at a domestic violence shelter as a women's advocate. Um, so it meant walking alongside um, women who were experiencing um, crisis or um, maybe were in shelter for a period of time with their families um, and just trying to offer what tools and resources we had to help them um, get, get situated in, a better, in better circumstances. Wow. Okay, I bet that had some uh, interesting aspects it, to it. Absolutely. It was a year of a lot of learning. and For um, you. <laughs> for me, absolutely, yeah. And so I spend my 40 hours a week there working at the shelter. Um, and that was the partner agency that I was matched with that we as Jesuit Volunteer Corps Northwest match the Jesuit volunteers with. So you're essentially like a full-time employee, but you're serving as a volunteer through us, oh. but at this local agency mm -hmm. that are already serving and meeting the local needs of, of the people in those communities. That's a, that's a good way to do it. What about you, Ian? Yeah, I, we were actually JVs the same year in Alaska. That was my second year. My oh. first year was in Boise, Idaho, and I worked at a homeless day facility called Corpus Christi House, essentially the one place for the homeless to um, really be at in, in Boise during the day. Really? Uh, especially and Boise is fairly large. City is yeah, it's a couple hundred thousand. Um, one got place? A, uh, yeah, a pretty sizable homeless community, and they really didn't, especially in the winter, didn't really have yeah. a place to go. Libraries, those kind of places, very kind of touch and go in terms of having those populations be there. So yeah. originally it was opened as a place for them to just have somewhere they can call home as well as develop that community. And so I basically did anything and everything that needed to be done to keep that running, whether it was handing out bus passes or breaking up fights or those kind of things. Wow. Um, and, and like Liz said, it really came down to a, a, the term of accompaniment or walking alongside people and really building those relationships that allow you to kind of move their lives forward through services. And so I really liked that year, did a second year. I was in Juneau, Alaska, so about 90 to 100 miles away from Sitka where she was at. And I also worked in the domestic violence field. I worked with men who had actually committed the offenses. Ah, so you're on the other side. In a way, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you know, mm -hmm. opposite sides of the coin, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was actually attracted to that position because there was, that was a very rare thing to see, was a program meant to be working with the men that while yeah. they're in prison, yeah. usually they, they kind of, that's just, they go to prison and that's the end of that part of the, of the story. But it was a class based on um, really sociological concepts about violence, where it comes from and talking with them for 52 weeks about where their stories have come from and their use of violence has come from. And it was actually part of a court order program, so they, oh, they also wow. had to be there. Yeah, uh, yeah. So there was a little bit of legal work uh, throughout the week as well in their cases. You find you build relationships, actual relationships with the people you worked with and, and maybe become friends with some of them, or do you have to separate that and try to 
Yeah, not, there's yeah. definitely, you learn and kind of, I think, spend the year getting to know your boundaries and um, what you can offer people. I think a lot of what I did was listening. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes they're not, people are not ready to receive maybe like um, an, a tool to implement to change something. Sometimes they just want their story to be heard. Be heard. And a lot sure. of the time it's just being able to be there and be an ear or a sounding board um, and offer just someone to be with rather than to take action right away. Well, that makes sense. Well, as you mentioned something about um, partnering with a, another nonprofit organization, is that what you usually do? Yes. Is that, is that the, how exactly. it's up? So, so tell me a little bit maybe, let's tell me a little bit about how that works. So say, um, well, what are some of the different programs or different things that you do with the Jesuit? Sure. Corps? So here in the Portland area, we actually have four houses. Um, there are two in Portland, one in Hillsboro and one in Gresham. Mm -hmm. And our volunteers live in communities of three to eight people. And then each of those volunteers will then go to their social service agency um, for their full day of work. And that looks different um, depending on what location you're in. Um, so you've heard a little bit about Boise and, and mm -hmm. Alaska, but here in the Portland area, we partner with agencies like Join, Street Roots, um, Sisters of the Road, Med uh, Wallace Medical Concern are all places sure. where our JVs are serving 40 hours a week and um, getting to know the clients. and at least 80% um, of their time is spent in direct service. So face to face with a client every day, um, getting their needs met at whatever whatever level that looks like. Hmm. Yes. You know, we have a, um, a short video that you provided right. um, that kind of gives the story of, of one Jesuit volunteer. So mm -hmm. I think maybe we should take a look at that now Great. and then we'll yeah. get back to yeah. some more details here. Great. Okay, let's take a look at that. My name is James Antonio and I'm a Jesuit volunteer in Portland, Oregon and my service placement is with Operation Night Watch. Operation Night Watch is a uh, night ministry that um, operates on Thursday, Friday and Saturday nights from 7 to 11 p.m. And what we do is we uh, welcome guests from all walks of life, uh, homeless or not, um, mentally healthy or mentally ill. We've kind of made a reputation for being the living room of downtown Portland, so everybody's welcome. My role here at Operation Night Watch is the program coordinator, and a lot of what I do is uh, running the hospitality center, but that is a lot. Um, one of my duties as program coordinator is um, creating relationships, um, and making friendships. Homelessness is more than just houselessness, it's lacking friendships, it's um, lacking those significant relationships with people. So I think that's the main impact that we make at Operation Nightwatch is um, making relationships. There are definitely um, moments where I just felt like I really don't know what I'm doing. There are your low times and there are also the very joyous times. One of the big joys of JVC Northwest is seeing um, the work that you do and uh, what um, impact you have on people. If I had any advice um, for anybody doing JVC Northwest, it's just to be open. Um, open with other people, open to different experiences. It's been just a great adventure and I don't regret any moments of it. I've really enjoyed my experience with JVC Northwest and it's made a big difference in my life. You're gonna get a lot of that. So that kind of gives us an idea of what of what well, we heard, what you did, what you did on your on your year, and, and is it always a year that that it well, is a year long program? But you can sign up again. Yes, you, you can do an additional year, but it's always generally we start in August and then it finishes the next July. Okay. And so a lot of people will ask if we have kind of an in between program, a summer program. At this point, it's it's that's a solid a year. year, but you can do an additional year. So. 
Where do you find the people to do this, and, and, and how do people find out about it, and how do they get involved? Uh, and that's a lot of what I do now. Yeah, uh, you're the recruiter. I'm the recruiter. Yeah, so tell so, me about that, Ian. So I spend most of the year traveling to uh, colleges and universities, talking with students about my experience and about our program as well. Uh, they come from all different schools. They come from all different kinds of, uh, I guess, places in those schools. Uh, a lot of the backgrounds, walks of life. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's some people just find us without my position as well. I mean, that's that's very common. But it, usually the people that apply are someone that's interested in, in living a year intentionally in a lot of different ways. They might have experience with service that might have kind of inspired them to do that, or they may not. And uh, the stories just kind of keep coming in terms of yeah. how people get there. But my job is, is hopefully being a, a resource out in the world throughout throughout the year and, and being able to a, uh, answer questions because really this this kind of back and forth interaction mm -hmm. is really the best way to learn about something. So. so when you say living intentionally, explain what you mean by that. Sure, yeah, it's, it's a big word in our program. As you touched on a little bit talking about community and our, and our jobs, but a lot of it requires you to be present at your placement and with the people that you're serving. But a lot of this program too is living in that community and that's, that's a really big distinguishing part of our program compared to some other postgraduate service programs. And these are people that you haven't met before. They're from all over the country. Mm -hmm. you get a little bio page, and there they are, and you're going to live with them for a year. Wow. And suddenly you find that you use the sponge at the sink differently, and you have to <laughs> you have to navigate through those issues of like how do how do we reconcile this? Who's clean? Who's dirty in the house? And you're uh, on the same finances, the same utilities, those kind of things. And it's probably at a pretty low level as far as finances. Am yes. I right? So one of the things that makes Jesuit Volunteer Corps Northwest unique compared to other um, volunteer programs is that we ask Jesuit volunteers to live by four values. And those, which we've touched on a little bit, are community, simple living, spirituality, and social and econ ecological justice. Mm. Um, and so that's why we live in community and we work with a community budget to talk about maybe we're buying this kind of peanut butter this week or maybe we're getting this kind of milk, but it's making decisions around simplifying our lifestyles and our budgets and our travel. Um, we do also offer um, three retreats each year that Jesuit volunteers get to attend um, and they get to join with other volunteers that are in their region. So all of Alaska gets to get together um, three times a year and during each of those weekends kind of step away from the service that you're doing and have a chance to reflect. One retreat will be on community, one on social and ecological justice, and one on spirituality to dig deeper into those values and find out what does it mean to be living intentionally this year with those as a guiding principle. So what did you learn from it personally? Can you share that? Oh, I mean, I'm gosh. sure there's a lot that you could share, but... Need another hour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah and I know I don't have that much time, but what... Uh, how did it change you? Well, that's one of the things that I think my job in the office actually as Outreach and Events Coordinator is to work with our, our former volunteers. And sometimes that means hearing their stories and the ways that they were impacted consistently, whether the volunteer uh, finished their service a year ago or 30 years ago, we hear that it was a transformative year that guided and shaped the rest of their lives. And so um, I think for me personally, one thing that I walked away with was um, just the value of, of listening, and mm. I kind of mentioned that before in service, that, that was a big part of what I did, but also in community and, um, and going into a new place. You know, a lot of prospective volunteers look at this year as a chance to go somewhere new. It's mm. part of the, the lure of the Northwest if, yeah. right. if you're from yeah. another part of the country. And so you go somewhere new and, and you're, not, uh, you're not part of that community yet. You're welcomed into that community, certainly. You get a chance to listen and to learn, and I think um, the value of hearing those stories and then um, being able to engage in a deeper, more meaningful way is, is probably something that I'll take with me from this year um, at, for the rest of wherever else I end up going. So when, when uh, somebody decides to become a Jesuit uh, volunteer, do they get to choose where they go or are they assigned? You know, I, I navigate this question a lot and so people want to know, can I go to Alaska right yeah. away? Uh, the way the process works is we really ask people to have kind of an openness about where, the, where they're headed. Uh, while at the same time throughout the application, there are questions that are going to be geared towards what do you like to do? Like what, where are your desires at? Because mm -hmm. that helps us kind of do that placement piece. A lot of it depends on when you apply. Mm -hmm. So our deadline every year is March 1st. And so if you apply before that by that priority deadline, you have more options in terms mm -hmm. of okay. to begin with. But a lot of it comes down to being able to speak well about your passions, but also being open to maybe something else that challenges you that year. I imagine that no matter where you go, you're still going to 
gain a lot from it personally yeah, and hopefully absolutely. give yeah. a lot too. Absolutely. Hopefully be able to make a difference. What about you, Ian, personally? What, um, what, what motivated you to join Jesuits? It's a great question. I, it comes a little bit from what Liz was saying. So I attended Gonzaga University and got a lot of great opportunities to do service and ministry work. But it was always very short, mm -hmm. and I never. And you always left with this feeling of like, oh, there's these relationships are not quite formed yet. By the time I leave that alternative spring break trip or something like that, and so I was looking for something that was really intentional but really authentic. And I think I really found that in my first year placement, uh, especially working with people uh, in situations of poverty. As my supervisor said, there's no mask. You know, no yeah. one no one ties a mask when you're tired. You're tired. When you're angry, you're angry. And I got to see all those emotions, and in turn had to kind of be more authentic myself. And I think a lot of people find JVC to be transformative because in that authenticity, you start learning about what really gets to you, what, what kind of grabs your heart and inspires you to do something, and that gives you some direction coming out of it. A lot of people come in with some form of study or major that, that kind of changes or, or yeah. transforms after their year because something else is kind of stirred. Well, they've learned right. things about themselves they may not otherwise have learned. Yeah, absolutely. So if somebody wants to become a Jesuit volunteer, what do they need to do? Well, where do you start? start, start we, we have a brand new website as of today, which Ooh, is fabulous. Nice. So, nice. jvcnorthwest.org is the place to go. And we have a great new, we just saw the video that is featured on the website, but we also have a whole section of information called Becoming a JV. And so it tells you basically the timeline, step by step, uh, what it looks like to go through the, the application process, frequently asked questions. Um, and then we also have some more featured stories of JVs who are serving or have, have served in the past um, to talk about what it was like for them to engage at their partner agency. So I think it gives a lot of good information on sort of what the transformation is like, what the service is like, what community life can, how that can be experienced. Um, so that would be a good first step would be check out our website and contact yeah. our office. We are always happy to have conversations. Yep. The interview process is a conversation. It's yeah. all about mutual discernment finding what fits best for them and for us. So, nice. so is, is there, are there ways for the community to be involved besides becoming a Jesuit volunteer? I mean, do you need other volunteers? Do you need donations? Do you need, what, what, what can the community do to, to I was help? gonna mention that as well. I mean, there is a process as well as an agency to apply for a JV, and that can so, also be so found. So a nonprofit perhaps mm -hmm. that wants to partner with you. Absolutely. Right, and there's a few stipulations, like 35, about 35 hours a week of, of worth of work for a uh -huh. JV to do, and a few of those things, those are all listed on there, but that's one way as an organization to become involved. Okay. Uh, we, there's also a donation page, it's always a need. Uh, for an organization. What, what organization doesn't need yeah. yeah. donations, sure. Yeah, so that, that's a lot of it, and, and just uh, it could be disengaging some of the JVs here as well. I mean, mm -hmm. there's JVs here locally that if you're really uh -huh. curious, you know, they're interesting folks to talk to, see what their experience oh. is like. We do have another program that's recently started in uh, mm -hmm. Portland called JV Encore, and it's for um, individuals who are 50 and over who are also looking to engage in service. Right. and. Mm -hmm. Um, they live the four values as well, uh, a little bit differently. They're not living in community, and they're putting in 200 hours a year at um, a placement that they're partnering with. So that's going here in Portland. We're in our second year of the program. We're looking to branch to Seattle and Spokane in the next year or two, um, but that's going currently. So that's another way to engage um, kind of outside of the postgraduate yeah. uh, younger service. Yeah, so score. The, most of the people are people right out of college. Most are. Right? Many right. are, yeah. yeah. Um, and so now there's one for the a little further up there for the correct yeah England, my age group. <laughs> so if I wanted to do that if I want to become involved in the in the yes. encore group yes um, it, I would be partnered or I would be working with a, a nonprofit agency exactly who, who are some of the agencies here you said Sisters of the Road that would be one is McDonald that one Center McDonald's. Saint okay. Andre Bassett Church um, are some of the like yeah. local downtown. A lot of them parallel kind of with some of the organizations right. that JVs some, are at as right. well. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we call them JVEs, so JV Encore members yeah. are, yeah, sometimes in the same placements as our JVs. Nice, yeah. nice. Well, we're just about out of time. Tell me, what, what things have you not told me that, uh, that we should know about the Jesuit Volunteer Corps? Mm -hmm. Well, it is a transforming year that I, our phrase that we use, both kind of in-house and out, is ruined for life. And <laughs> you are ruined for life. And that takes on a meaning for each individual as they pro uh, kind of progress through their year and as they look back on it. And so, uh, But one you're of, saying it with a smile, so yes, it's a good thing. It's a good yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah, it's yeah, a fabulous kind ruined. of ruined. So, yeah, yeah you yeah. will be ruined for life. 
it's just very life changing. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. And it creates a really strong community. I mean, Liz could tell you that. That's a lot of her position, but after your, your years of JVC, it, it's pretty incredible to, to meet these people in some of the most random places. So people that you were in the community mm -hmm. with, other JVs, is that what you're or talking about? Or people I've never or met people. before that had done the program oh, eight or ten years instant earlier. Oh, kinship? Absolutely, there yeah. Is, yeah, and that's wow. really a special thing when that happens, and it happens more often than you would expect. Wow, yeah. that's great. Okay, well, thank you so much. Is thank there uh, anything else that I've, that I've missed here? No, okay. I think do you ever do fundraising or anything like that? We do. We have an annual event every year in Seattle, okay. and we've got a great event lined up already for April. Okay. Um, and we're we have a occasional events in Portland as well. So okay. um, and that I assume will be on your website. It sure will. Check out okay. the website. Yeah. Good, Absolutely. good. Thank you. thank you, Liz. Thank you, Ian, thank so much you. for thank being you. on here. It was great to hear all about the Jesuit Volunteers Core Northwest and the Encore Group too. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks for watching this episode of Community Hotline. You've got all the information you need now to find out about SAFPAC or about the JVs and uh, go to their websites, learn more, and become involved in your community. Thanks for watching Community Hotline. We'll see you next week. Okay.